So to start the discussion, we're going to start with Isabelle, who will give us a roundup of this election year, so we have a good grasp of what is happening. 44 countries are going to have either a new president or a new parliament. We also have elections in, in Europe. So it's, it's something that is quite extraordinary. Um, 2024 will be an incredible year regarding uh, the elections organized absolutely everywhere. In India, the biggest democracy, in, of the, of the, in South Africa, in Iran, Brazil, Nigeria, Taiwan, Russia, maybe in Ukraine, and of course um, in, in Europe with the European elections, so, my, and, and USA, of course. Uh, my question would be, I mean, my, I will try to understand if it's, uh, if the, all this election will be a continuity or a breakup regarding the major geopolitical trends uh, we've seen these last years in, in the world. My guess is that it will be continuity. Um, I mean, uh, except the USA elections, most of the elections in the world um, will have, I mean, the results will have a very low impact on the geopolitical trends we are uh, viewing today. Uh, Russian election, it's, I mean, no suspense. Iran election, very few suspense. Belarusian, the same thing. Um, I mean, the majority of the autocratic regime will uh, organize themselves to win the election. Uh, coming to the democratic countries, even if um, the power, the BJP in India is challenged, there's a few chance that uh, geopolitical that the foreign policy of India, which is based on the multi-alignment, will be changed. Um, even which is not, for example, which is not at the, at the moment the most uh, uh, probable, even if in, in Taiwan the DPP loses the election, and if the opposition, which uh, uh, is um, asking for uh, an appeasement politics toward China, even if they win, and I could just come back from Taiwan three days ago, and it's not what is expected, you, you will not see from one day to another Taiwan just becoming uh, again in the, in the China uh, area. The, the important elections have already been organized in 2023. In Europe, it's Poland and Slovakia which has changed their uh, political drive, and also uh, Turkey with the reconduction of Erdogan. Of course, you will tell me there's a big, an exception, and a big exception, which is uh, the, the American election. And the perspective is tr if Trump is re-elected of uh, big consequences, first, on the help to Ukraine, and second, on the future of NATO, but even that is not sure, because um, can we uh, really expect Donald Trump to um, sell off the future of the Western world by cutting from one day to another the help to Ukraine? I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, my point would be that even if Trump is re-elected, is elected, um, is coming back next year in uh, Washington. It will, um, I mean, this election will be only an accelerator to the trends, the geopolitical trends which still exist. And these trends are not at all in favor of the Western world. If you liked 2023, you will definitely love 2024 because on the menu we have the generalization of the use of force, which uh, month after month is replacing the rule of law. 
we'll have um, the continuing of the collapse of the, of the international order from 1945, and with it, the um, international in institutions which were a guarantee for peace, like UN and also the disarmament uh, treaty. We'll also have new challenges to the Western world, the continuing of the decrease of democracies um, and the um, augmentation of the, of the autocracies. Uh, we'll have the con continuation of the split of the world in two parts, not camp, but part or much more family. One is the South Global and the other is the uh, Global North. And whatever the election, the result of the election will be uh, in India, in South Africa, in, uh, in Russia, uh, even in the States, this time will, will continue and will be boosted. So for me, as a uh, Western journalist traveling all around, um, more than the elections, the determining influence on the geopolitical trends in 2024 will be um, who's going to win the war between Russia and Ukraine, and uh, secondly, what will be the consequences of the war between Israel and Hamas. And meanwhile, waiting um, for a uh, next international order, international order with new rules that everybody will have to work on. Uh, the previous one will continue to collapse and we'll have a more crisis to come in this world which is becoming a jungle. One may be the crisis between Taiwan and China, others could happen in the Balkans and, of course, in, uh, in Africa. I will end by a sentence of uh, Joe Biden. Yesterday he was having a conversation with the president of Chile, and here's what he said. He said, in my view, um, there comes a time, maybe every six to eight generations, where the world changes in a very short time. Here we are, and I think what happens in the two, three years are going to determine what the world looks like for the next five or six decades. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So a very defining moment, but not especially com coming from the elections, as you said, because the most important ones were this year, Poland, um, Slo Slovakia. Uh, Slovakia, of course. Um, nevertheless, there's the big one next year that everybody's looking at, and it's 2024, I'm turning...